Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another podcast. And today we're going to be talking about the Spartan Race. So recently, a group of AI peers, we all went down to the Gold Coast and we undertook the Spartan Race. So we did the Beast and the Super. The Beast being a seven kilometer race and the Super being a 14. Now, if you don't know what the Spartan Race is, as I just said, it is a preset distance race. It is a trail run, if you will. So um, not always on clear, clear identifiable paths, but there are markers indicating where you should go through rainforest, plains, mountains, whatever the terrain happens to be, creeks, um, and they put a whole swag of obstacles in your way. Now, what I really like about the Spartan is some of the obstacles are difficult. So, and this is um, no slight against something like Tough Mudder, but see, like the Tough Mudder, for example, is an 18K well, typically about 18 kilometer type run, but the obstacles aren't necessarily difficult. So it's there more as a fun type run and you're not allowed to race it. The Spartan, as the name indicates, is a race. You can do it for fun or you can enter a, comp a competitive style wave. I'm very pleased to announce that the AIP guys did exceptionally well. Very, very well for a lot of us, it was their first time. So we're gonna talk a little bit about what we actually did in the Spartan race, how we trained for it, what you get out of it, and what we learned from it. So what is the Spartan race? So let me just open up, and I've got a URL here ready to rumble. It's a Facebook URL, so I'll have to load it up because otherwise I'm gonna sit here with Facebook in the background and it's gonna go ding, 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 ding. <laughs> That was our wave, actually, coincidentally. I think there's about four of us just off camera there. Cool. So what kind of obstacles do we have in that? So we mentioned it is a the one we did, so a blend of either the 7K or the 14-kilometer run. Now, uh, majority of us did the 14, so I'm going to talk to that one because that's the specific event that I participated in as well. Now, there are all sorts of terrain changes. So when we first started off, we were running through fields and plains, and I'm gonna open up, so let's just open up the super course map here. So you can see there's lots, lots of plains, there's lots of uphill into the mountain type stuff here, um, and then they've marked out all the obstacles as well. So this is these sort of maps are really useful. Now, a lot of the obstacles are often put after particularly challenging sections of terrain. So you might have to swim, and legit swim, not wade, swim through very, very cold creeks, go running through a rainforest, get all muddy, sweaty, and then have to do a ring swing, or a rope climb, or carry a heavy sandbag up a hill. So if we open up, where's my nifty little folder of photos? So there are things like monkey bars, so these monkey bars were set at different heights, so you had to reach up to some of them. It's a bit difficult to tell, but this particular bar here is elevated, um, and then come back down. Your hands are slippery. Um, you can see in the photo, it's quite early in the morning. The grass is really dewy. It dried out nicely, and we actually had fabulous weather. Um, and then what other obstacles did we have? So there was more monkey bar type stuff. Let's just use, can I just scroll sideways here? Yeah, um, this is called the Olympus Wall. This was right near the end um, of the event. Uh, and it's very taxing on forearms. So what's unique about the Spartan race is if you get your obstacles wrong, so you don't complete the obstacle correctly, like in this one, if your feet touch the ground or you grab the top of the boards, you have to do 30 burpees. Not just any old burpees, but chest to floor, lie down, lie down, get back up, jump, clap your hands overhead times 30. So what that does is one, you lose a bucket load of time. So depending on how fast you can do 30 burpees, sort of three minutes-ish worth of time. And it takes so much energy to do that, especially after it may be a tough obstacle or you've just run uphill. Now, the super, where's my map gone? So the super had about, how many obstacles is that? You can see there, that's like, what, 20 obstacles off the top of my head. Some of them are super simple, like crawling through a tunnel. You can't really fail that. Um, some of them become very technical, so balancing on very, 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 very narrow little bridges after a run. Again, if you fall off that, then you need to then do 30 burpees. Um, right up to, again, a technical one, which is a spear throw. So you might, you might be about 10 meters away from a target, have to throw a spear at it. Everybody gets that one wrong, except Nigel. <laughs> out of our crew, and I'll point out Nigel, was the only one who hit the spear throw. 
I'm going to leave it there. Um, and then you've got some um, that, that require strength. So you might have to carry a sandbag up a hill, which wasn't too bad in this one. And then some of the times you just have to run up a dirty, dirty big hill. Check this out. See the elevation down the bottom here in, in the, uh, the red topographic. So you got the topographical bit up there. Then you've got the red elevation chart here. So between five and seven and a half kilometers. So about the 6K mark. Look at this hill. That gradient maximum slope. 39%. So it's obviously not 39 the whole way up, but it's a solid 30 the whole way up. So from six to seven and a half kilometers up that hill. You then got to run back down it again, but that is a kilometer and a half of a 30% uphill run. So when uh, all the people at the gym notice my guys running uphill on treadmills, carrying plates, that's why. <laughs> Because there is nothing like not training for a hill for your legs to suddenly melt because there's running and then there's running uphill and then there's running with weights. So when we train, we train to do the obstacles harder than the situation you would actually find yourself in. And that's gonna lead me into what kind of training we do. So I've had a couple of training blocks. So this is our crew. There's been a couple of different training blocks that we've done leading up to this. There's we did two four-week training blocks based around cardiovascular and body weight strength training. So things like pull-ups, burpees. And what we do is you don't just train them in isolation. In fact, I might even pull up some of my workouts. Let's see if we can go find one, shall we? Um, let's go to... Oh, look, here's the secret inner back workings of how all the Patreon works. Let's go in. Actually, look at that. I was smart enough to put them in a Spartan folder. Let's take one of these. So let's pick a cardio one, for example. So these, actually, let's pick one of the hardcore ones. This was what I called a Spartan superset. Oh no, it wasn't. Okay, it's one of the less hardcore ones. In 25 minutes for this particular workout, you had to do a 500 meter run, 50 double under skips. So jump, skip twice. 50 push ups, 40 double unders, 40 crunches, 30 double unders, so on and so forth, as many times as you possibly could in 25 minutes. So there's no definite start and finish. It is just pushing yourself. And we use this as a benchmark test to see at the start of the four week block, how far could you get? And then at the tail end of the four week block, how far could you get? So it's a great metric to see how much fitter you've got. Some of the strength ones, I'm gonna go find, let me find another one. Let's do August. Let's do a super Spartan. Not that one. Let's go view. Where's one of the savage ones? Uh, let's do, let's do that one. Yeah. So in this one, 30 seconds of rower, and then you had to do an arms only climb. So we have a monkey bar rig or TRX rig, if you like. We strung a rope up it. You had to climb up it using your arms only. If you had to use feet, you had to use feet. You then had to do the length of the monkey bar. Then on the treadmill, maximum incline, which is 15%. You had to do 400 meters holding a 20 kilo plate if you were a male and a 10 kilo plate if you're a lady. You must hold the plate with two hands the whole time. It's amazing what you can and can't do when your hands are tied up carrying a heavy plate. Then you, then you had to do 50 plate presses with that same plate. So up overhead, reverse seal walk. I could explain what that is, but maybe you might know with sliding your feet along the floor, pushing with your hands. And then by that time, everything is exhausted, everything is tired, and you had to do a 400 meter sprint as fast as you could, and then finish it with weighted crunches. Those sort of workouts take about 45 minutes. Now, what's, why do we train like that? So lots and lots of different moves, because that's exactly what this kind of race entails. So obstacle type races, uh, yes, there is a bucket load of cardio, and yes, you need to be able to run 14 kilometers, absolutely but it's not steady state cardio. So steady state cardio is being able to run in a nice, you know, find a nice rhythm and be able to find a, a breathing pattern and a running rhythm to be able to maintain pace. The Spartan doesn't let you do that. By sheer dint of the terrain changing, so you can have a look here, I mean, obviously you can see the different elevations in height here. We go from 133 meters above sea level right up to 430 above sea level. Um, that messes with how your muscles operate. The muscles you use when you run climbing hills is very different to the muscles you use when you're running on flat. 
And then when you start to throw obstacles in there, you need to be able to lift your body weight over an eight foot wall, which is taller than you are. You need to be able to hang while wet and muddy from rings using grip strength. Um, what most of us don't realize, and I need something to demonstrate this, is, let's just use my phone. When you do grip strength, what most of us rely on friction on bars so that you grab the bar and the friction of your skin on bar holds you there. When you're wet, that doesn't work. Your hands slide. So I often get complaints um, from training clients that can I use chalk or my hands are slippery, the bars are slippery, they're sweaty. There's a reason we practice that because your grip will be wet and you will be required to hang your body weight from fingers, you know, being able to close your hand strongly enough to be able to maintain your body weight. So there is very much a reason that I get people to do monkey bars when you're sweaty. Just, you know, for those who are watching, uh, that's why we do it. Now, so that's more or less what we did for Spartan Race. We did lots and lots of cardiovascular mixed with um, training of muscular power and endurance, and we just mixed it all over the place. So all the guys were able to run at least 7Ks if they were doing a 7, and they were all able to run 14 if they were doing that. Now, very pleased to report. How did the boys go? So let me just talk a little bit about our crew that went down. Now, this is this photo doesn't have everyone in it, and I'm going to apologize for the crew that went down, and I don't have you all there. But I'm going to talk, talk to this photo just because I happen to have it here. So we've got Wayne here on the far left. So Wayne's in the 40 to 49 age category and came 15th. Came 15th, did very, very well, and I think only did two sets of burpees, which is really good. You then got, uh, I'm, there, I'm there in the red Ironman shirt. I got second in my age group, so from 30 to 39 age category. Stoked with that. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. We've got Nigel in the middle, first timer, did the 7K, finished it, felt comfortable, and has come an absolutely amazing journey with his upper body strength. When we first started, and Nigel, I'm sorry, I'm going to drop you in the deep end a bit here. When we first started training, um, Nigel was doing incline push-ups, feet on floor, uh, pull-ups, I should say, with feet on floor. He's able to now do up to 20 pull-ups, you know, in sets of twos, threes, up to fives with his own body weight, did not find the obstacles that much of a challenge. And he was the only one who nailed the spear throw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Several things just went through my head there, Nigel, and none of them were pleasant because <laughs> I had to do burpees there. We then got Maddie in the blue shirt next to Nigel. So did, again, first timer for Spartan, Maddie. Maddie did the 14, did exceptionally well, has not done a whole heap of long distance running and has just sort of started getting into this kind of training and is just killing it. Did exceptionally well, sir. And then on the right on the end, we've got Angus. Angus was in the under 19 categories and won it by about 15 minutes over second place. Well done, sir. Absolutely smashed through it. Now down the bottom as well, we've got here, this is Mr. Paul. So Paul um, is racing in the elite category. So there's no age barriers on that. That is just the fittest and the best. Um, Paul did very well on the day. So he had been coming from a few calf injuries. So he's had calf niggles, hasn't been able to get the cardio necessarily that he particularly wanted and just pulled out an excellent, excellent performance on the day with a really quick time to finish in a, you know, in a, in a good placing amongst the elite field. So well done, sir. Now, you can see we've all got these UB little medals. So what I really like about the Spartan race is that one, just for finishing, so this was my second Spartan race. Um, just for finishing, they give you, I might actually put this on full face cam. Give me one second, full face camera. Cool, is you get these UB little medals just for finishing. So the first one I ever did was um, the Spartan Sprint, the seven kilometer, and very happy I got third in that as well, which then gave me the motivation to go on and keep trying. So you got that medal. This was the one we then got for the, the Super, which is the 14K. They have a third one, which is called um, the Beast, which is 21 kilometers. Now what's really cool is along with those medals, if you were to do the sprint, you would get that little medal, and then you also get a third of another medal, the Spartan Sprint, that one there, which then we've now done the super as well, and we got another third of a medal. And what's cool is these have little magnetic strips in them, 
and they go together to form a full trifecta, if you will, metal. So when you get all three pieces, that forms a 7, a 14, and a 21K total metal to say that you've done them all. I think that's fabulous. What a great way to get you motivated to keep coming back and not just coming back, but going further each time. I, that is just such a great idea. So on the cards for us now is our 21 kilometer. Now, again, as I mentioned before, so I got second in my age category, which I'm absolutely stoked with. And probably the biggest lesson um, that I learned from was the training, so the training that we undertook um, had me really prepared for it. So cardiovascularly, I felt fa fabulous, got to the end. What I didn't do correctly, and there's lots of, particularly as you get into the longer events, you need to have things like hydration packs, energy gels, because you're out there for you know two hours plus. Um, when you're out there for the 21K, you're going to be out there for maybe verging on two and a half hours. Um, is you need to be able to be hydrated, you need to have energy, and you need to be able to maintain in your mind how far you are through the run. That's not something I did correctly in this race. So I do have running watches. Um, they are not mud proof. So I didn't have a way of determining other than a general idea of where the obstacles were in the race of where I was through the course. So when we finished, there's a big hill in the middle of it, which is about the seven and a half K mark. So I, when we got down off that hill and we got to a certain point, through the run, I thought we might be at about the nine kilometer mark and I had heaps of gas left. We then, I went past someone who had a watch and he and asked them, you know, how far are we into the run? And they very generously said, oh, look, we've just hit the 12 and a half K mark. So there's only one and a half K left. So I had to turn, you know, I turned the, turned the speed on then to, to bring it home. Um, but yeah, obviously got to the end and felt like I had more to give, which is not disappointing because I'm very, very pleased with how I did for my second um, second ever Spartan and first one in that category. But a lesson learnt is to have a watch next time and to pace yourself so that you know that when you finish, you want to finish and be almost have nothing left in the tank. So you you know have spent everything in your run and get there to get the best time possible. So that's probably the biggest takeaway that I'm going to take out of that event, um, I need to get my pacing a bit better. So that's what, particularly in the competitive waves, that's something that you're gonna need to learn. And it's a bit hard to keep track of all that when you're doing things like rope climbs. So you might've just done a big long run and then you have to you know, learn how to climb a rope. Um, if you don't know how to climb a rope, you need to learn how to climb it. Because again, it's not a difficult thing to do once you know how to do it in the technique, but if you've never done it before, it can be borderline impossible. Um, and then you had, Oh, where's my spear throw? I didn't get the spear throw picture. Nuts. That's okay. But the spear throw, that's the one that everybody misses. And again, Nigel hit it. The rest of us didn't. Practice burpees. If you are interested in doing the Spartan race, you need to be able to, yes, run the distance. You need to be able to practice running sort of 500 to one kilometer intervals and then doing something that requires muscular power. So maybe box jumps or practice burpees. That's probably the biggest tip I'm going to give you is... Do your training runs and every 500 meters hit the deck and do 10 to 15 burpees. Get used to doing burpees because if you get, say, even if you get three obstacles wrong, 330s, that's 90 chest to floor burpees. That's a workout by itself. So get used to it, get motivated to, oh, excuse me, get motivated to not do burpees and we'll all be better off for it. So guys, that's a bit of a summary about what the Spartan race is, how we went, what we did. It was a little bit disjointed. This one was a quicker one um, today. You just wanted to get in, get something, get it out, get it in, get it done, get it out. So I hope it was enjoyable to you guys. Let's throw it back on here. So the Spartan race, there are two left in this season. Let's pull this back up. Let's go find the Spartan race dates for the rest of the year. So one is down in Western Sydney. Spartan race dates. Let's find out. One is in Western Sydney and one is in Bright in Victoria. Upcoming races, what have we got? We have Western Sydney, October 6th. Um, there is one they do in the city, which is a 7K one. That's in December. I didn't know about that one. Cool. There is also one in Bright, which is November 17th to 18th. And that's over two days because you actually have the opportunity to do the trifecta race, which means that you do the... 21 the first day and then the 7 and the 14 the next day or the other way around. I haven't had, I can't remember off the top of my head, but you do the seven and the 14 on one day and you do the 21K the next day. 
pretty tempted to give that a go too. Hmm. Anyway, gang, thanks so much for listening and we'll have another podcast for you next week. Catch you later.